Welcome to MIDI Jam Session. I'm assuming you've just downloaded the zip file and when you unpack that you'll find uh, full detailed instructions, you'll find a few sample MIDIs, and the main application is called MIDI Jam Session. I'll begin by loading a MIDI file that has uh, two channels of information. One is the right hand and one is the left hand. And these channels are indicated in the square brackets. You can adjust the instruments that you select for each of the channels, and I'll begin by using the preview instruments. So you can use either the time slider or you can enter percentages directly to render your audio. You can adjust the mutes for individual channels. And you can also use the lock buttons to cause all of the controls to follow whatever you do on channel 1. Now we see that the right hand is on channel 1. Let's try putting that on the right channel in our stereo sound field and the left hand on the left channel. Now I won't render this to audio because I'm not actually recording stereo, but you can experiment with that. The um, lock button is useful as is the random pan in case you're just looking for some sort of interesting way of assigning your instruments uh, someplace in the stereo sound field. I'm demonstrating how you can use kind of a leapfrogging technique. Also, this is a good time to point out that the yellow indicator comes on whenever LabVIEW is playing audio and as long as it's playing audio, you won't be able to do anything more with the application. I had those muted. So of course now we can hear something. So as I say, you can grab the pointers and use a le leapfrogging technique. Or you can jump and search for points of interest within the piece. Let's try a MIDI file that has more channel activity. Stars and Stripes Forever has uh, instruments assigned on channels 2 through 15. And let's unmute all of the channels. And just to kind of keep the rendering time shorts for this short for the demo, let's push this down to 8 seconds. Now suppose you wanted to investigate instruments on just a small handful of channels. For example, we see piccolos on channels 2 and 8. So I'll begin by muting all of the channels and then unmute channels 2 and 8. And I happen to know that the piccolos have interesting work towards the end of the piece. Now you'll notice that the pan control did not move back to zero for channel 10. So channel 10 is an exception. That's the one associated with percussion. And if we look back in the MIDI file, we see that in fact drums is assigned to channel 10. So when you operate the lock controls, they affect everything except channel 10. Now if you're rendering the entire piece, it would probably be wise to turn off the listen button because you'll spend 3 minutes and 24 seconds waiting for LabVIEW to finish because there's no way to cancel uh, or uh, um, otherwise break out of the LabVIEW playing of that. So you can save that to a WAV file directly. You can also save your MIDI note events to a CSV or comma separated values spreadsheet file as well. Now, so far I've been using the preview instruments. If you would like to be able to design your own algorithm to be played, 
look for the virtual musical instrument or VMI called the VMI prototype. And the prototype has detailed instructions uh, giving advice on what to do and what not to do. In particular, you want to leave the sections labeled do not modify alone, but everything in between you can uh, delete what's there and then add your own method for creating uh, basically a fragment of audio samples that would indicate uh, a single note. So I'm going to try just using the prototype instrument directly. And again, notice that channel 10 is always doing its own thing. Let's try somewhere in the middle of the piece. All right, so I need to turn on my listen button if I want to hear anything. Now you'll notice that I've assigned my instrument to channel one, but if you look carefully back at the uh, track listing, there are no instruments on channel one. So what I will do is use the lock button to give me the ability to use my prototype instrument on all of the channels. And again, we'll leave the preview instrument for the drum alone. So that's a basic sine wave generator with a decaying exponential envelope. That sounds pretty good, and um, I'm looking forward to you trying out your own algorithms in there as well. I also wanted to point out that the default sampling frequency is fairly low. That will give you fast rendering times when you're just trying to practice and explore the MIDI file a little bit. Um, you can, of course, adjust the sampling frequency to whatever you like. Also, I'll point out that the uh, instruments in the band, unfortunately, always show up with the beginning of the path instead of the end, so you can always scroll to the right in order to see that uh, actual instrument that you've assigned. I'll also mention that when you've put a lot of effort into getting your instruments assigned, uh, you can exit out of the application and then make the current values default. I won't actually select that in the video, but that's what you would pick. And then do a save, and that way next time you bring up MIDI Jam Session, you'll be back where you started. Well, I hope you enjoy using MIDI Jam Session and playing your own virtual musical instruments.